Um, <laughs> hi. Hi, hi. Can we? Can still mute it? Okay. Oh, here we are. Did, did, does it, what I've been talking about, does it make some kind of sense? Yes, absolutely. Good. I'm glad to hear that. You're the first person I've talked to who's been, been watching, so it's good to hear that. So why don't we do this to start with? So you, I have the sides you sent me, these Eleanor sides. Yes. And we were, you wanted to focus on scene three, right? Correct. Great. So why don't we just read it once right now? Um, okay. Just the way that you've kind of worked on it to the, in the past, the best, the best of your ability. I know that's a lot of pressure right now. You're in front of people and you're doing it, but what the heck, right? Okay, yeah. So whenever you're ready, we'll just jump in and read it together, okay? Okay. Okay. Hey. Hey. I don't know how to say goodbye to you. We don't have to say anything. This isn't about us. I don't know when I'll see you again. I might never see you. That's, that's not gonna happen. I, I can't believe that, that, I can't believe that life would give us this and then take it away. I can. Life's a bastard. It's up to us not to lose this. Eleanor, I love you. I'm not gonna stop just because you're in Minnesota. Don't. I, I'm never going to stop. You can't promise that. You're only 17. Bono was 15 when he met his wife. Robert Smith was 14. Oh, Romeo. Sweet Romeo. It's not like that. And, and you know it. There's no reason to think we're going to stop loving each other. And there's every reason to think that we won't. I've been wanting to tell you. Tell me what? You saved my life. No, I didn't. Not just today, but every day since we met. And now I'm yours. The me that's me right now is yours. Always. Eleanor. Thank you, Park. Great. Next, I want to stop there, okay? But okay. very, very nice. Very nice. Um, so now I want, to, I want to play with this a little bit in the way that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. okay? And Michael, everybody can, can, see, um, can see her, yes? Yes. Fantastic. Oh, and there's Michael again. So say something again to us. Um, Talking uh, again, I'm reading the side trail. <laughs> Great, thank you. Groovy. So going along with, and, and very lovely, thank you so much for, for, for jumping in and, and playing with us and being the, the, the very brave first player. <laughs> um, so what if we, you know, going along with what we're talking about, it seems to me, right, that what I was talking about, that's what's literally happening for Eleanor in the scene is she's saying goodbye to her boyfriend. Yes. And she's letting him know that, um, that he saved her life. Yes. Right? Great. So let's try to find an essential action and an mm -hmm. as if that you can play with. Okay. And then we're going to play with this little improv exercise if you're up for it, okay? Yeah, totally. Great. So... Can you imagine um, a couple things come to mind for this scene? Letting someone know how much you admire them, mm. letting someone know they were right, letting someone know they can make it without me. Do yeah. any of those things resonate with you? Um, the make it without me, I think. Great. Yeah. So, and, and here's what we want to do, guys, too, is that as crazy as it may sound, when we're coming up with the as ifs, we don't want to re-articulate what's literally happening in the scene. Mm -hmm. And when actors jump in my classes and they start working with me, this is one of the things that doesn't make sense at first until they really try it. Mm -hmm. And then it, it's, it's kind of amazing what we begin to see. Because you would think, right, that like with a scene like, you know, the, this lovely scene we just read, that, well, the as if wants to be something romantic mm -hmm. because that will match the scene, right? right but actually it tends to make us self-conscious. Okay. Because it reminds us that, oh, I'm playing at being a lover. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm, yeah. Or it can remind us like, well, this isn't my real boyfriend or girlfriend. And it, it, so what we're trying to do is get away from that and do something fun that okay. takes us away from the imaginary circumstances. Oh. So, so to let someone know they can make it without me, does anything come to mind? And here's, and, and, and you know, 
to talk a little bit more about, about the as if, not just for you, Angelina, but for everybody, right? Um, that it wants to be something, the as if wants to be something that we can imagine happens, imagine happening, but hasn't actually happened. Right. Because if it's actually happened, it's a memory mm -hmm. and we can't spontaneously play it. Right. Yeah. It, it often a great as if is something that we always wanted to do, but we never got a chance to do. Yeah. We can make up characters or like I did with my brother in the example I gave, he, he never did cocaine. I hope he never does it, but I could imagine him doing it. Um, so there are things that the imagination doesn't rebel. They're from real people in our life or people we could imagine being in our life. And they're fun for us to imagine doing. Okay but they haven't actually happened. And this is where a lot of actors, I think, fall in the trap with like ideas of emotional recall. Uh, and they try to remember things that happened, but it takes them out of the actual scene. Yeah. Instead of playing the scene, we're trying to remember stuff. Right. right. So is there any pretty high stakes situation that hasn't really happened to you, but you could imagine happening where you're letting someone know they can make it without you? Um. I could imagine uh, that my boyfriend gets a job and it's across the country, let's say like in California. Great. Now we wanted, that makes sense, but that's the re-articulation of what's actually happening in the scene, right? Okay. And Sorry that's, where, but that, no, no, it's all good. That's where the, that's where the ego and the mind want to go. It's obvious, right? It's like, well, wait, yeah. this is, but we're sort of going against the obvious. Okay. And, and again, for reasons we'll see, it, it's what, creates helps create the honesty and the spontaneity of the scene so okay. do you have any brothers or sisters yes so little younger um i'm actually the youngest so they're older than me they're yeah. older than you. can you imagine um well maybe it might be a parent can you imagine that like you have an opportunity to do charity work or to do i mean some kind of amazing organization not acting related because right. another trap with as if guys is that we don't want to make the as ifs about the business. Okay. Because that can make us self-conscious. Right. So we're trying to get away from anything that makes us self-conscious. But can you imagine that you were doing some kind of charity work, some kind of job that was going to take you away from your family for a year? Okay. And are you really close to your mom or dad? Yeah, I'm really close to both my parents, more my mom. Great. So is it safe for you to imagine, meaning we don't want it to be, um, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, it's not gonna take me to like a dark place. Or like, it's not gonna take you to a dark place. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So it's not gonna take you to a dark place. Correct. Okay. Um, so is this the case, meaning can you imagine that you're about to go away for a year to do this charity work and yeah. you're not going to see your mom for a year mm -hmm. and she's really bereft mm -hmm. but you're telling her she's going to make it without you yes you're trying to let her know that mom i know it's going to be rough but you're going to make it without me mm -hmm. make sense yeah okay and do you have your screen set up where you can like see me without seeing you can you uh, see me? pretty much yeah I'm, I'm very tiny at the top Oh, good, 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 good. Because I've galleried for everybody so they can see both of us. But I want you to just focus yeah, yeah. on me when you're doing this. Totally. Okay? So, great. Your mom, you're doing this charity work for a year, and you're having to let her know that you're trying to let her know that she can make it without you. Yeah. Okay? So I'm just going to take you through this exercise. All you have to do is listen and play along with me okay got it so close your eyes and i want you to be in that specific environment with your mother her house your house wherever it is uh, let's imagine it's not covid for all our sakes right so you're there with your mom it's a done deal you're doing this this whatever it is, this special work for a year where you're going to be in a different country and not see her and she can't see you. And you've been having this really, you know, intense conversation. And you know she's upset. You know she's partly heartbroken. 
and right now watch yourself see your mom and she's even though you know there's a lot going on she kind of is looking a bit blankly but you see what you see in her eyes and watch yourself in your mind right now as challenging as it may be to let her know that she's going to make it without you and as weird as it may be she's not saying anything She's just looking at you. But how is she looking at you? What would you see in her eyes? What would she say? What expression would dawn on her face for you to know that she knows she's gonna be okay without you? And you're not getting that, so you just have to keep going. You just have to keep going. But the way you're doing it is all based spontaneously on what you see in your mother. And when I say open your eyes, not yet, but when I say open your eyes, you're going to open your eyes and look at me and just keep doing the improv out loud from wherever you left off in your mind. No longer seeing your mom, but talking to me as if I'm your mom in the same exact way you are. Only when you're talking to me, you're trying to do it to me. You're trying to get me to know I'm gonna be okay without you, but you're just continuing to talk to me as if I were your mother. Not pretending I'm saying anything I'm not, just basing everything off what you see in my face. Okay. And you'll just keep doing the improv to me. And at a certain point, I'll say, hey, and we'll just jump into the scene. But I want you to forget about every idea you have about the scene. I want you to let the lines mean anything. All you're doing with the lines is doing the same thing you're doing in the improv. Trying to let me know I'm gonna be okay without you. Mm -hmm. And I might take us back and forth. At some point, I might say improv. And you go back to doing the improv to me. And then I might take us back to the scene. Okay? Mm -hmm. But right now, just keep watching your mom. Really trying to do that with your mom. And again, when I say open your eyes, you're just going to start doing the improv out loud to me. Open your eyes. Mom, you've got a whole book to write. You're in the middle of it and it's so good and you're going to finish it. And I'm going to read it when I get back. But you don't need me for that. You have everyone around you. You have dad. And he's going to be so proud of you. Why? I'm going to come back. Mom, look, you, you live in paradise. You live on the beach. You're going to forget about me a lot, and that's okay. I'm going to be doing my thing. I'm going to be so happy. Hey. Hey. I don't know how to say goodbye to you. Yeah, well, we, we don't have to say anything. This isn't about us. I don't know when I'll see you again. I might never see you. No, that's not going to happen. I, I can't believe that life would, would give us this and then, and then take that away. I can. Life's a bastard. It's up to us not to lose this. Eleanor, I love you. I'm, I'm not going to stop just because you're in Minnesota. Don't. I'm never going to stop. You can't promise that. Improv. You're only 17. Improv. Mom, that's ridiculous. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to be on the same planet and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to be the same person and you're going to be the same person and we'll just pick up right where we left off. I'm never going to stop. You can't promise that. You're only 17. 
Bono was 15 when he met his wife. Robert Smith was 14. Oh, Romeo, sweet Romeo. It's not like that, and, and you know it. There's no reason to think we're going to stop loving each other, and there's every reason to think that we won't. I've been wanting to tell you. Tell me what? You saved my life. No, I didn't. Not just today. Improv. Mom, you've been amazing. And that's not going to change. I'm going to think about you every day. And I'm going to think about how you got me here. How you're the reason I'm doing all of this. No, I didn't. Not just today, but every day since we met. And now I'm yours. The me that's me right now is yours, always. Eleanor. Thank you, Perk. Very nice. Thank Very you. nice. Thank you, Angeline. Thank you so much. Could you feel that when you were on oh, the sure. action and the sure. lines were meaning Absolutely. anything? Yeah? So, so lovely to watch. So lovely to watch. And again, thank you for jumping in. And so this is also why everybody that, like I said at the start, we want to forget about the idea of acting being about getting it right. Right. It's not getting it right. It's just dealer's choice. Mm -hmm. It's just, what do I want to show? Right. Mm -hmm. And if I were coaching Angelina, like if she came to me and like, oh, we're, we're working this on this audition. I thought it was lovely what she was doing and she was playing it really honestly and, and doing a really good job of letting those lines mean anything. I would probably come up with a couple different action as if combos. Right. You know, so we could just see what feels good to you. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? What yeah. is the most fun and what is, you know, um, what sets the stakes? Real quick, could you imagine, let me, if, if it's not safe, tell me. Are your grandparents still alive? Yes. Are you close to them? Yeah. Is it safe for you to play with imagining, and if it's not, please tell me it's A-OK, -okay, but imagining one of them on their deathbed and you telling them how much you admire them and the way they live their life? Yeah. So close your eyes and be there with that grandparent in a hospital room. and they're holding your hand and they're smiling at you and they seem to be at peace and you get a chance right now to tell them how much you admire them and you've always admired them and they're just looking at you but you really want them to know this they're just looking at you you want them to know how much you admire them. And again, when I say open your eyes, keep doing it to me, and then we'll jump into the scene. Open your eyes. Grandma, I've, look up, I've looked up to you every day of my life, and I want you to know I wouldn't be the same person I am if you hadn't been there. Hey. Hey. I don't know how to say goodbye to you. We don't have to say anything. This isn't about us. I don't know when I'll see you again. I might never see you. No, that's not, that's not gonna happen. I, I can't believe that life would give us this and then, and then take that away. I can. Life's a bastard. Improv. Grandma, this is real. I, I need you to hear me right now. You were everything. And I, I admire the way you lived your life and the way you treated us and- I can't believe that life would give us this and then take it away. I can, life's a bastard. It's up to us not to lose this. Eleanor, 
I love you. I'm not going to stop just because you're in Minnesota. Don't. I'm never going to stop. You can't promise that. You're only 17. Very nice. Very, very nice. So you see the difference there too? Yeah, absolutely. Right? So, and, 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 and very, very lovely work, Angelina. And you begin to notice too, right, how you can feel yourself wanting to do the line readings, mm -hmm. right? And then sometimes breaking out of them and sometimes like, wait, why am I saying the line like that? Yep. Right? Because what we're after with this approach too, and why I find it really helpful, guys, to practice memorizing lines wrote, mm. like with no inflection with this way of working, yeah. Because we often don't realize that we're doing emotional line readings while we're memorizing. Yeah. We totally. don't realize it, right? We're like, I've always loved you. I've always loved you. I've all, and then that's the way the line wants to come out. But what was so lovely is that with, with Angelina right there, seeing in, in, I mean, these, these really beautiful moments where she is letting the lines mean anything. And even when falling back into some of the line readings, you can watch her, in my eyes, breaking free from them. Yeah. And really trying to, to do the thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And as you experienced, Angelina, the, the subtle yet profound difference between letting grandfather I know how much I admire him and letting mom know she's going to be okay without me. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so this is, this is the kind of stuff that, that we're, we're after. And you begin to experience, too, the freedom and the fun mm. that comes with, like, not worrying about the falsity of the scene. Right. Right? Yeah. And really being able to play it with whoever that person is. Mm -hmm. And how maybe you didn't think it would happen, but how with that exercise you were able to really see the loved ones in your mind. Yeah. And really talk to me as if I was that loved one. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Fantastic. Such lovely work. Thank you so much for playing with us. Thank you. You're so welcome. <laughs> Everybody in your own little private places, give it up. For Angelina, that was that was so lovely and for me moving to do with you and I and I thank you so much.